the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Hey, come to the junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Hey, come to the junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Hey, come to the junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Very cold junction. <laughs> things up around here. Of course not. <laughs> Boy, it's genius to have a time with you women. <laughs> History records that Mrs. Fulton was always saying, now Robert quit messing up the front room. Well, if that's where he was building his steamboat, you can't blame her. Is that what he come up with? <laughs> Guess I owe her an apology. Remember that the next time you see her. <laughs> what time are the kids due back? Another couple of hours. That long? They flew all the way to Springdale. Yeah, I know. I just heard on the weather report that we can expect thunder and lightning storms. You still pay attention to that yahoo. He ain't been right since we moved here. for this two-way radio. When Steve gets back with his unit, we can contact him. I just hope and pray that Steve and Betty Joe aren't even close to this. Are you all right? Yourself. Remember when I indicated for us to go down? Uh huh. Oh, was I glad you said no? Why? No place to land. I knew you'd make it. The Carson Elliott Airways always comes through. Well, what are we all standing here for? Let's go up to the Shady Rest and you can tell us all about it. Gosh, Steve, what was the first thing you thought of when the storm hit? The first thing? Well, I said to myself, I never knew it to fail. You get a worse job and right away it starts raining. <laughs> There's a pilot for you, laughing in the face of danger. On the outside. Inside, I was crying like a baby. Oh, Steve. What about you, Betty Jo? Hmm? Well, wasn't what happened tonight just about the most exciting thing that ever happened to you? Well, don't worry about the shortstop. She was terrific. And I told her so the moment we landed. And then did you kiss the ground? <laughs> no. <laughs> 
but uh, that might not have been a bad idea. You know, you kids' experiences remind me of my own days when I was flying the mail in the islands. When you were flying the mail? Well, you know me. Never wanted to talk about my experiences. <laughs> there was this one time, though, when I got caught in an updraft. It shot me up, oh, 40, 50,000 feet. First thing I know, my wings start icing up, and I begin losing elevation. Down, down I went. I knew I was a goner if I didn't think of something. Well, sir, right at the last minute, I spot a live volcano. Instantly, I put her into a glide, and I go down to within three feet of the molten lava. Well, naturally, the heat from the lava defrosts the ice off my wings. I regain my altitude and go on to deliver the mail. <laughs> Oh, an interesting sidelight to the story. The ice from the wings put out the volcano and saved the village. Naturally, they made me a god. <laughs> I could go on and on, but it would only take the edge off of your little adventure. Um, Betty Jo, uh, you're awfully quiet. Do you feel all right? I'm okay, Mom. Yeah, but you had a kind of a trying day. Maybe you'd just better get upstairs and get to bed, huh? Whatever you say. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night Betty, Betty Joe. Jo. Good night, Steve. Good night, Betty Joe. Good night, oh, big bird. <laughs> Mom, do you have to go right now? I mean... Do you have time for talk? Well, I always have time for that, honey. I've got a problem. I kind of thought you did. What is it? Well, it concerns Steve and me. What about Steve and you? We're in love. You're... Oh, I know. You're just as surprised and shocked as I was. I mean, Steve being Billy Joe's boyfriend and all, but... We couldn't help it. it. It just happened. Uh, wait a minute. Let's back up a little. Uh, when did it happen? Before you went to Springdale? No. On the way back? I, I guess so. All I know is that when we landed, he took me in his arms and kissed me. Well, that's an emotional reaction. You know, uh, making it through the storm and all. Why, you were glad to be on the ground. I don't think it was a glad-to-be-on-the-ground kiss. Oh, maybe it started out that way, but then... Oh, Mom, I never felt that way before in my whole life. Nobody ever did. Well, sweetheart, it isn't that unique. Wonderful, maybe, but not unique. You mean it always happens like that? Being like that? No, it doesn't always happen that way. But we're not entirely sure it happened. Mom, you don't know how I feel. What about Steve? How does he feel? The same. Did he say he did? Well, no, but... I can tell. You should. Mom. Honey, uh... Two people can react to the same situation in a different way. What are you trying to tell me? Well, you and Steve have been through a very exciting experience. I'll say. I mean, coming through the storm and all. Oh. And, uh, when two people have such an exciting experience, it can bring them together. I'll say. For the moment. You don't think Steve meant it? That he wasn't sincere? I'm just saying that that you are so grateful for, for, for coming through safely that this could easily trigger what happened. Then you think I should forget it. What I think is that you should, as the kids say, cool it. And for the moment, let's see if it's going to blow over. Because you might be reading a lot more into that kiss than Steve intended. whether to feel happy or sad. On the one hand, I was feeling like the biggest stinker in the world for stealing Billy Joe's boyfriend. But on the other hand, well, I guess it won't hurt to sleep on it. That's 
good girl. Good night. Good night, Mom. I'm just roughing out the big news story. What news story? Uh, yesterday, Steve and Betty Joe's airplane trip from Springdale. When did you hear about that? Uncle Joe was in earlier. Oh, he does get around. You know, he can beat a rumor down the valley. <laughs> hey, listen to this, kid. <clears throat> the frail, storm-tossed craft, bolted by lightning, Rocked by thunder, swept willy-nilly by the perverse elements, fought against insurmountable odds. Oh, as the, oh, as the, uh, Where did you get such talk? I've been saving it, Kate. It come out of a review of an old Buddy Rogers movie. <laughs> well, you better keep saving it. They might rerun the movie. <laughs> this was going to be my headline story. But you can still have your story. Just say, uh, uh, Steve Elliott and Betty Jo Bradley on their way back from Springdale, got caught in an electric storm. But they landed safely at the Shady Rest, and I made half a dozen cans of tuna. The way you put it, Kate, you make half a dozen cans of tuna sound more exciting than the story. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Bradley. Hi, Steve. Could I have a talk with you? Well, of course. What is it? Well, I've got a problem. Oh? Well? What would you say if I told you I was in love with your daughter? Well, I don't know, Steve. I guess I wouldn't be too surprised. After all, you and Billy Joe have been going steady for some time, and, and it's not Billy Joe. No, it isn't. Bobby Joe? I'm running out of daughters. <laughs> it's Betty Joe. That's the one that's left over. Um, are you sure? Oh, am I sure? You see, well, something happened last night. I know. You do? Yes, Betty Joe told me. But I'd like to hear your version. How did it happen? Well, I don't really know myself. I, I guess it had been building up for a long time, and I didn't know it. All I know is when we were in that storm, all I could think of was what a fool I was to get Betty Joe into such a spot. And, what a terrific girl she was to come through the way she did. And then, when we landed, I sort of kissed her and... Boom! It was like every light in the whole world flashed on. You sure it wasn't the excitement of the moment? Believe me, Mrs. Bradley, I tried to think that. I went to bed last night telling myself I'd wake up feeling differently. And here I am, about as hung up on a girl as a guy can be. Yeah, it does pose a problem, you know. I know. Billy Joe. I'd do almost anything to keep her from being hurt. Please believe that. Oh, I believe you. But that's where you and I are different. Pardon? Well, you said you would do almost anything. I would do anything to keep my daughter from getting hurt. Steve, do you know anything about country customs? Well, what do you mean? Well, we're kind of old-fashioned around here, and we have traditions. And one of the traditions is that the oldest daughters are the first to leave the nest. Leave the nest? Well, I wasn't even thinking that far ahead. Well, maybe not, but it is something to consider. You see, if the young girl gets her man first, it's kind of a slap in the face to the older girls. A matter of fact, it uh, almost pushes them into the category of being old maids. Those two? Old maids? Huh. I can't buy that. Well, maybe I am painting too drastic a picture, but you do see the predicament I'm in. Yeah. Looks like somebody's going to end up being hurt no matter what. Exactly. And Steve, I wish I were wise enough to uh, settle this thing right off, but I'm not, so I'm going to have to have a little time to think of something. In other words, um, would you hold off declaring yourself? Think you could do that? Sure, I could. And Mrs. Bradley, you know I didn't set out to cause anything like this, don't you? It just happened. I know. Oh, boy. Hey, Kate, I got some. Listen. What is it? Well, if my calculations are correct, I'm tracking a moon satellite. Yeah, that's what it is, all right. Hey, this is a powerful thing. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, have you tried tracking the porch? Huh? 
What do you mean? <laughs> Why the roadblocks they throw in front of us scientists? <laughs> you just don't know my problem. I'll trade you even. <laughs> Kate, something bothering you? What is it? Maybe I can help you out. No, I don't. Wait a minute. Maybe you can. After all, it is a family problem. Yeah? Yeah, it's about Steve and Betty Jo. They're serious. Serious about what? They're in love. <laughs> no kidding. How about that? It doesn't disturb you? No, why should it? I think it's terrific. You do? Yeah, I think what it'll do for the dynasty. What? Steve's a great pilot, and Betty Jo's a terrific mechanic. You couldn't get a better combination for the crop dusting business. <laughs> Matches like this are made only in a grease pit. Okay. This is going to work out great. Okay. That's a lot of fun, Katya. I do This is the greatest thing since thermos bottles. Speaking of thermos bottles, there's something that's always puzzled me. They keep things cold and they keep things hot. How do they know when to do which? <laughs> it's, uh, it's something to think about. Uh, why don't you lie down in the porch swing and give it some thought? Way ahead of you, Kate. I'm just heading that way. Well, did you get everything you wanted in town? Did I ever? Wait till you see. These are for my oriental number. Oh, that's very pretty. <laughs> you know, my agent thinks that this number is going to be the high spot of my act. Oh, no. Sayonara. <laughs> <laughs> no ticky, no shirty. That's as far east as I get. <laughs> oh, I bought a kimono, too, Mom. I'll go out and put it on. Uh, Billy Joe? Oh, I want to talk to you, dear. Would you come here and sit down a minute, please? Okay, Mom. <laughs> You know, honey, uh, life sometimes takes some strange twists. What I mean is that sometimes things happen and you're not prepared for them. Mom, are you still worried about me going into show business? Oh, no, that's at least to my worries. I was concerned at first, but you've proven yourself sensible and level-headed. No, this, uh, this concerns our immediate family. Oh. You see, it concerns you and, and Steve and Betty Jo and... Mom, what are you trying to say? Steve and Betty Jo are in love. What? Oh, honey, I meant to put it in a better way, but now it's out. I just hope you're not too hurt. Oh, well, gosh, you know, I think it's sensational. You see, I know that the relationship between you and... Sensational? <laughs> well, it's wonderful. It solves everything. But I thought you and Steve were, you know... Uh... Oh, sure, Mom. Well, Steve and I were going together for a while, and I'm very fond of him. I'm sure he's fond of me. But I was kind of afraid maybe too fond. Oh? Well, you know, that he might get serious and then start thinking about, well, marriage. You don't want that? Well, not right now. But don't you see? I have my career. If I got married, I'd have to give it up. And then I'd always wonder, could I have made it? This way, I'll be able to find out. And someday when I'm ready, I hope the right man will come along. <laughs> what do you know? You see, actually, I'm quite relieved. Honey, don't look now, but that makes two of us. <laughs> and one to go. Does she know about it? I doubt it. Hey, Steve and Betty Jo are in love. What? I just can't believe it. Uh, do you have to be so blunt about it? Uh, Mommy Jo, I know you're fond of Steve, but you see... Fond of him? I think he's one of the sweetest guys in the whole world. Oh, dear. But he'll never replace the writer I'm going to marry. <laughs> writer? What writer? Oh, I don't know who he is. I haven't met him yet. But I'm looking, and I will. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will. Who knows? Maybe we'll be a team. Written by Mr. and Mrs. Bobby Joe Bradley. Oh, <laughs> oh we could use his name. <laughs> you are good. You know, both of you are just the greatest. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse your worrywart mother, I have to go upstairs and take care of something. Okay? Mom? He was gone. Gone? Are 
Betty sure? Of course I'm sure. All of his belongings are gone. And Betty... Have you seen your sister? No. You don't think. I don't know what to think. Betty Jo! Betty Jo! Be down in a minute, Mom. Oh. My goodness, she's not gone. How am I going to tell her about Steve? He left without even saying goodbye. Is that in his box? <laughs> This is best for all concerned. I am much too fond of the Bradley family to hurt any one of you. Knowing and living with you has been the best thing that ever happened to me, and I will never forget you. Sincerely, Steve. Well, that's it. He's really gone. And it's all our fault. I feel just awful. Oh, no, not another storm. Poor Steve. He'll be caught up in it. Oh, this is terrible. Be a mean one. I've almost gotten my battery wet. <laughs> What's the matter? The dinner burned? <laughs> Steve is gone. What? And he's out in the storm. Oh, no. The dynasty was just getting off the ground. Oh, Joe, is that all you think of? Well, this is serious. Well, it's also serious with Steve up there in the storm. Yeah. You know what they say? You only get so many chances. Sooner or later, there's a bullet with your name on it. A boot! There are no bullets up there. Well, bullet, lightning bolt, it's all the same. Oh, you are a cheery one. Oh, Joe, is there any chance of getting Steve on that thing? I was just going to suggest that. Oh, Uncle Joe, you've got to get through. And tell him to come back. Okay, tell him okay. that we love him. Call him Steve Elliott. Call him Steve Elliott. <laughs> Call him Steve Elliott. Call him Steve Elliott. Mayday. 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 What is that? It's the International Code of Distress. <laughs> Call him Steve Elliott. Mayday. 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 Well, oh, maybe you have the wrong day. Maybe it's Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Oh, that ain't it. We could just try calling him by his name. <laughs> yeah. Calling Steve Elliott. Calling Steve Elliott. Come in, Steve. Come in. Let me handle it. Come in, Steve. Come in. What is it, Joe? I got him. I got him. What are you doing here? Well, I, uh... I see you got my note. Oh, yes. Yes, we got it. Well, the best laid plans. I couldn't get my plane started. You couldn't? No, I guess in that rough landing, I must have knocked off the distributor cap. Distributor cap? Uh, yeah, it's a little thing that... It's, don't bother. It's just... They're right, you see. There is a bright side to everything. There is? Mm-hmm. You know that, uh, little talk we had this morning? Well, I think everything's gonna work out just fine. No kidding? Well, where's Betty Jo? She's upstairs. It's to be right there. <laughs> I just remembered I baked a cake this afternoon, so why don't we all have some and celebrate? Good thinking, Kate. We'll celebrate the rebirth of the dynasty. <laughs> oh, we're so glad that we're back, Steve. Please don't ever leave with Kate. Daddy Joe? Steve is here. Coming, Mom. <laughs> We're near the plane. <laughs> What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a distributor cap before? <laughs> well, 